Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I am the owner of Burner Babies and Iowa Yorkie Babies. So I often get the question of how do I know or how do I decide who I'm going to breed with who? And then I also get the question of how do I pick the puppies that I'm going to keep back? So if you have not followed me for very long, I keep back our females. Um, I keep back our own puppies um, and we do not adopt from anybody else for our girls. We import our boys from overseas and then we keep our own girls. I just feel like we have the very best puppies and therefore why would I go anywhere else? And so today we're going to answer those questions. How do I decide who I'm, I'm going to breed who with? And then how do I choose a puppy that we're going to keep? So we're going to start with the Yorkies because honestly they're pretty simple. So we have, um, two sires in the Yorkies. We have Bowie, who is a party Yorkie, and then we have Capone, who is a traditional Yorkie. Both of our boys are between five and five and a half pounds. And then we have five um, Yorkie females, four which are part parties, if I can talk, and then one who is a traditional. Now, all five of our girls are above that five and a half pound mark. And so when you raise any small breed, it is vital that your males are smaller than the females. So everybody gets along with the exception of the two boys. Anytime anybody's in heat, my boys will fight like crazy. So they are separated. They are not ever put together, especially if I have anybody who's even close to coming in heat. So um, one thing to know about the party and the traditional Yorkies is the traditional color genetics will always um, win versus the party color genetics. So that black and gold will always <clears throat> win over the party colors. And so anytime I breed Capone to anyone, his color genetics will be what the puppies will be. And then, um, the only time we have party puppies is if Bowie is bred to one of the party girls. And so if I want party puppies, Bowie is the sire. And if I want traditional puppies, Capone is the sire. So the only time that that is different is if AJ is the mother. And so obviously her color genetics win um, and she is always bred to Bowie. So with the Yorkies, the color genetics are what um, determines who I breed to who. Um, <clears throat> do I want party puppies or do I want traditional puppies? And that's how the Yorkies are determined all based on color genetics. I'm sorry. My throat is very dry. So Yorkies, it's all about color genetics. Everybody gets along as far as mating pairs. Um, the boys and the girls, they all get along. Some of my girls will fight. So they're just not kept together. Um, you know, like right now when no one's breeding. Um, but as far as mating pairs, everyone gets along. Color genetics, super easy. Then we move over to the burner side, which starts to get crazy complicated. <laughs> it's like a whirlwind um, mess up here in my head about who can and cannot be bred together. So we're gonna try to make this as simple as possible. Okay, I'm going to try. So if you have any questions about anything that I say, please make sure to put them in the comments and I will try my very best um, to answer them. Okay, so with Bernie's Mountain Dogs, you have a lot of genetic baggage that comes with them. We all know the story about how they almost went extinct and therefore the genetic baggage that comes with the Bernie's Mountain Dog is insane, right? So with burners, the genetics come first. So we have almost eliminated all of our, okay, let me start over. If you followed the Bernie's Mountain Dog at all, we all know what the major uh, diseases are that we need to look for, right? DM, PRA, von Brands, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia. Okay, so those are the five things that we're going to talk about right now. So DM. DM is a paralyzing disease. Okay, so basically what it does is the spinal cord will swell and eventually will paralyze the back end of the dog. Okay, so 
we're going to talk about two different things. A dual carrier means that the dog can eventually get the disease. And then we're going to talk about a singular carrier. So we have no dual carriers here, but we do have some singular carriers, which means the dog will not get the disease. Okay. So singular carriers are pretty common in the Bernese Mountain Dog world. Um, and what that means is the dog will not get the disease, but it is a carrier of the disease. So you can never, and I mean never, breed two singular carriers together. Because what that means is those two singular carriers could create a dual carrier in a puppy, and that puppy could eventually get the disease. So we almost have no singular carriers here anymore. We've almost eliminated them. But the singular carriers we do have, it's important not to breed them together, right? Okay, so in the Bernese Mountain Dog only, they, there has been a mutation of the DM gene to create a DMB. So not only do breeders need to test for DM, we also now have to test for DMB. So again, you have the singular carrier and the dual carrier. So not only can we not breed the DM singular carrier, but we also cannot breed them to a DMB singular carrier. <laughs> Getting confusing yet? I probably need a whiteboard or something <laughs> to write this on. So it's very important to know who our carriers are if we have any. So that's rule number one. Okay, never ever breed any DM carriers together, whether they be the DM or the DMB carriers together, because that could create a problem in the puppies. Rule number one, PRA, which will create blindness in the pup, in a dog. So PRA will, it is a retinal detachment disease that eventually in a dog will create blindness. So, um... Never in my years have I had anybody come up with this, either as a carrier or a dual carrier. Um, but it it's out there. It's a disease that is prevalent in the Bernese Mountain Dog. Von Wildebrand's is a, is a blood disorder that um, can also, or is also prevalent in the Bernese Mountain Dog. And what it does is it creates a clotting disorder. And so this is something that breeders also need to look for. Then we get to the hip dysplasias. So um, in the Bernie's, well, in any dog, there are several types of ratings. I'm gonna go with the OFA because that's what we do. There's also the pin hip test, um, but we OFA here. And so in OFA, there's excellent, there's good, there's fair, and then you get down into the hip dysplasias. And then, in elbows, there's just normal, and then there's forms of dysplasia. I've never had anybody come back with dysplasias in the elbows, so I'm I'm not 100% sure what, what those failures would look like. Um, but versus the hip display or the hip ratings, the only thing you get in the elbows is normal. So normal is good. Um, but then if they fail, I'm sure that there's ratings for that. But but I am honestly not 100% sure because I've never had a dog come back with anything but normal elbows. So the very first thing are the genetic diseases. You got to look for those. And then you want to um, look at the hip ratings and or elbows if you don't have, if you have something other than normal. So, which I would hope not. I mean, if you have something other than normal, you probably shouldn't be breeding that dog. So let's say, for example you have a dog with fair hips. Now that's still technically passing, but it's not the best. You know, you're, you're right above the um, borderline dysplasia. So actually that's true. I forgot to mention that. So you have your, your excellent, your good, your fair, um, and then you actually have like a borderline and then you get into your dysplasias. So I forgot about that. There is like this borderline thing that's kind of like in between fair and dysplasias. So let's say you have a dog that's like fair. 
you know, to give those puppies that if, if you decide that you're going to breed somebody with fair hips, you want to give those puppies the best chance at good hips that you can. So you'll want to breed that dog to somebody with like excellent hips so that you're giving those puppies the best chance that you can. So that might be a good pairing. <clears throat> so then the next thing you want to look at is temperaments. Now in the Bernice Mountain Dog world, this really isn't a fair category <laughs> because they're, they really all have great temperaments. So you're really not, I mean, what are you really looking at, honestly, when it comes to temperaments? I mean, I don't have a bad dog in the bunch. I don't think anyways. So you might be looking at things like, how were they as a puppy? Um, you, you know, things like that. Because I can't really say that I have a bad dog in this whole group of dogs. So after temperament, then you're going to look at markings. So um, I might take a dog with a wide blaze and breed that dog with somebody with a thinner blaze to try to give the, the puppies more of even markings. Um, what I don't want to do is really breed, breed two different dogs, <clears throat> excuse me, two dogs with really wide blazes because I don't want too much white. And so you're going to look at things like that. So that's the type of things that I look at is I, I always, always look at the genetics first. Then I try to look at the hip ratings, make sure that I'm not breeding. Like I would never breed, um, I would never breed like too fair. And honestly, I don't even know if I have two fair in the bunch. I think I have one fair in the whole, in my whole, um, kennel, um, but I have several excellence I, and the majority of my dogs are good. And then I, I have like a handful of excellence, but most everybody is good. And so, um, I try to keep those goods together. If I have a fair, I would definitely try to breed that dog to an excellent. Um, and I would, I would always try to go up with the hip ratings. Um, and that's simply to try to give the pups the best chance at giving, at getting, um, good hips versus, um, like going down, if that makes sense. Like I would never go fair and then like, God forbid, borderline. Ugh. First of all, I wouldn't do that. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like you really got to look at those ratings and try to give your puppies the best chance. Then you want to look at temperament and make sure, you know, you wouldn't want to breed, um, two crazy dogs together. Um, and then you want to look at the markings. Now, one thing I will say since boss came into the picture is I also have to look at size because boss is extremely intimidating to some of my smaller girls. Um, I did try to breed a little bit to him and I got one pup. He was overwhelming for her. And so now, um, I have to kind of look at who I can breed him with who won't be intimidated Whereas I never really had to look at that before because my girls were kind of not necessarily evenly matched, but they weren't intimidated by my boys that were like 125 pounds. Whereas boss is a very large and overpowering male. Some of my girls are like, uh, nope, <laughs> this is not going to happen. Plus he's, he is, um, not very nice. Like he wants to pull at their tail and things like that. And some of my girls just won't have it. More of my seasoned mothers are like, no, this guy is rude and they don't want anything to do with him. And so I have to look at that now too. Whereas before, you know, my boys were very suave, you know, to, to use that, you know, they were more gentlemanly and boss just is very inexperienced and, um, he hasn't got to that level yet. And so my girls are just not having any part of it. So <clears throat> my younger girls are willing to put up with a lot more versus my more experienced mothers, which I find extremely interesting. So genetics, hip um, scores, temperaments, markings. So those and, and now size. So you have to kind of look at like the overall picture to try to get that best match to make sure that the puppies are going to be the best that they can be 
because what I'm trying to produce here, and I know it sounds crazy, but I want show quality dogs, but in a family. <laughs> you know, I'm not here producing show dogs, but I want them to be that quality, but in your home. So <clears throat> that's that. So now how do I pick my puppies? So this is probably <laughs> not the way to pick your puppies. So I do a lot on my gut and kind of on my heart. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a couple different stories. I'm going to tell you not to do this. So, and you can read these stories on my page too. So Ohana, she was a puppy that was still left here at six weeks old and she had not found a home yet and nobody loved her yet. And so I was like, well, I'll love you. So I kept her a little bit, got sick. And I was like spoon feeding her. And so I kept her. So don't do those things. Don't get attached to puppies because then you end up as, with as many dogs as me. But those are like special circumstances, right? So that's not typically how I would do like my pick of the litter. So let's, <clears throat> but that happens, right? That happens. I, I get attached to puppies and then I don't want them to leave. But if I were to tell you how I do pick of the litter, I will tell you that there are tons of different factors. So a lot of it has to do with the mother and the bloodlines that come that the puppy comes from. Um, it generally doesn't have a ton to do with the sire. I'm gonna tell you it has a lot to do with the mother because the puppies tend to take more after their mom because that's how they're being raised. Um, it has a little bit to do with their body type. I am not one that's like, oh, this is the biggest puppy in the litter. This one's mine. Um, I do a little bit of temperament testing, not a ton, um, because I feel that a lot of things can be trained. And I'm not saying I'm the world's best trainer because I'm not, but I feel like um, even a rowdy puppy can be trained to do a lot of decent things and be trained with good manners. So um, I would say a ton has to do with the, whose puppy it is. Um, a lot has to do with how easy her labor and deliveries are. I almost never, ever pick a puppy from their first litter. Um, I like to see how her labors and deliveries are. So for example, I love and adore Mishka. I love her so much. She's like the world's best and sweetest dog. But yeah, I do not have a puppy on a Mishka. In fact, she's fixed now. Um... And it's because of how difficult she was to get pregnant. Um, she always had to have C-sections. And as much as I would have loved to keep a puppy from her, I feel like her daughters would have the same trouble. And so I, I did not get to keep a puppy on a Mishka. Um, despite the fact that I would have loved to have a puppy on a Mishka. <clears throat> Mishka is built like perfect. She literally is perfect. But I am always afraid to keep a puppy from a dog like that for fear her offspring would be the same and so I prefer to keep puppies out of mothers who have at least uh, they don't have to have easy labor and delivery but ones that um, have easier pregnancies and decently easy labors as far as not always ending up in a c-section or things like that. So um, I tend to keep puppies from like the second or third litter um, because I like to see how pregnancies and things like that go first. And then um, like with Sunshine, for example, so she's a puppy that I kept out of Mamba's litter. I She was not the biggest puppy in the litter. I really liked her markings, so I look for a few different things. Um, I really like the cross on the chest. Um, I want them to be sturdy as far as, um, bulkiness. I want their markings to be semi-even. -e um, but really I look for overall bulkiness, but not the, the big, they don't have to be the biggest in the litter. And then kind of a funny story about Diva so if you follow me for any length of time, <laughs> you know about Bear. Um, Diva actually was not my pick of the litter because um, she comes from Sunshine's litter. 
and I picked up Diva to do her video and as I and so she was one that I looked at to keep and decided not to and um, I picked her up to do her video for the families and I got this rush of like emotion and um, like bear instantly came to my thoughts and I, I, I did her video anyways and I put her online and I just couldn't get it out of my head. Like it just was like bear, bear, bear. And so I sent the video to my husband and I was like, I think we're supposed to keep this puppy. I just really think we're supposed to keep her. Like bear says I have to keep her. And trust me, I know how crazy that sounds. So we kept her cause bear told me to. <laughs> Trust me, I know, trust me, I know that sounds nuts. And Diva was the biggest one in that litter. But if you look at her markings, even the little freckle on her nose, she looks just like Bear. I mean, it's really, really crazy. And I was not even thinking that. I looked at her before I picked Sunshine. So anyhow, that's why we have Diva. So, I mean, <laughs> there are so many things a lot of times it really is just the parents. Um, I am connected to all of my dogs, but like Mamba is, I love Mamba. She's out, she's out of bears lines, you know, um, Katya, I have two of her girls. She was an amazing, amazing dog. Um, you know, I have a couple of Caleb's girls. I, I have all my, like, a lot of times it really is the connection to the parents more so the mom uh, a lot of times it really it really is the connection to the mother and then I look at the overall bulkiness and the markings of the dog and and do I feel a connection um, I feel like right away sunshine picked me I mean I feel like as soon as I pick a puppy they know that they're mine they act different with me they connect different with me. It, it really is amazing. It's like they know that they're mine. And so I would say the puppies kind of just, I feel like either they know or they pick me or something. Something is different the minute I say this puppy is mine. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, another thing we do too is if, you know, like when I talked about in the beginning, if there is a DM carrier, um, we'll do genetic testing too on the whole litter before we even pick a puppy because we are trying to eliminate any carriers in our breeding um, dogs. So that's how we have slowly eliminated. You know, I think I think we only have three now out of our all of our dogs. You know that are still actively breeding. So we are slowly kind of um, getting out of the, ca any carriers. So it, it just kind of takes time because it was so kind of prevalent before. Um, so yeah, so yep, we'll do testing and we'll pick from the non-carriers and, um, it's all about markings and bulkiness and, um, you know, any kind of temperament testing and yeah, so Anyhow, that's what I've got. Hopefully that all makes sense. If you don't have it, if you have any questions, let me know down below. And hopefully that genetic stuff kind of didn't trip you up. It it's not as confusing as it sounds. <laughs> but um but yeah. Anyhow, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, let me know and make sure that you like and subscribe below so you get notified anytime I make a new video. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone.